that the employees are more or the employees are less based on the demand the salary is also fixed the person who is in the middle level is actually getting more salary than a person in another company who is in the top level management there are few employees who are in oracle they actually get more salary if you compare with the same designation employee and laborers were not treated as different entity they were treated as same entity Hello everybody a warm welcome to one and all I am Abhilash Chandra from the Department of Commerce and Management in Vidyashram First Grade College the Temple of Excellence welcome to all the students for the third session and in this session I'm going to teach you about the factors which affect the wage and salary administration here students we need to know what are the real factors which definitely affects the wage and salary administration you may know so many other factors but these 10 factors which i'm going to tell you right now those are the top most important factors the first one here when we go with the factors is remuneration means what that is what you are supposed to know what is remuneration now remuneration is given to both the people that is the employees and the laborers so when we go with this the employees they are the one who actually does the quantum work and they get something called salary on the basis of per month but when it comes to the laborers sure now they are the people who actually does the work or they give the services which the employer is asking them to do it and they get something called the wages here so here both are termed as remuneration to each and every person who does something for the company or something for the employer now here the term employees remuneration includes both wages and salaries that is the first point which you people should know now what are the factors which alter the wage whether they'll get more or less there should be some factors right now what exactly those factors are the first factor here is we have demand and supply now because of the rate of demand when we see that that the employees are more or the employees are less based on the demand the salary is also fixed the same way when it comes to the laborers also are we getting the laborers or not so even that is what the demand and supply when demand is more what usually happens is they get more salary or more wages when demand is less that means they have more people to go for the work right more people can actually come and work now what happens is the wages and the salary will have little reduction that means they'll reduce the salary or they'll reduce the wages that is what happens when it comes to the demand and supply so we got the first point that is demand and supply and the second one here is organization ability to pay now there are few organization what they usually do is it can be the reputation it can be their market standard it can be their attitude now here what they feel is this is what we can offer you as what they tell to the employees or the laborers then and there it's straight forward they'll be like i'll be paying you this much for this position this is what the salary we can actually give it now this is the attitude of the organization that is the ability now there are few organizations who can actually pay more because their market capital is very big or gigantic company it is or the company reputation is very good now what happens here is the salary administration will have a slight difference between the other administration of any of the company around that particular place so that is what the ability of the organization is all about the next one we have is prevailing market rate now even the competitive rates you people need to actually estimate and then what happens is the wage and salary administration are fixed so that means the company which goes with the administration of wage and salary they need to check what exactly the other market people are doing it that means i'll be giving you a, an example now here in 1936 the minimum wage rate act was actually passed by the british government we were not independent and that is the time they actually said that this is what a minimum wage rate should be for any person who works and those days let me tell you here employee and laborers were not treated as different entity they were treated as same entity 
After that, the minute we got independence in 1947, the then Prime Minister Nehru, he is a person who actually made a committee of let's go for a revised act and that was the act which was called as minimum wage rate act of 1948 and they went with a separation of laborers and employees but not too much separation of it they had equal kind of acts but what really happened is little justifications were given to the laborers and not the employees now students if you understand the labor act of 2020 or 2021 how it is revised is You'll be feeling so sad about the laborers who goes with the minimum wage rate per day. They are the people, there are people who actually get only 176 rupees per day. If you calculate it, now say example here, we have the market uh, prevail that is minimum is 176 rupees. Now what we usually do is for a month, how much will he actually get? So what we do is we multiply with 30, but you're not supposed to do. Because in a month, though we have 30 days or 31 days, but we have four Sundays. So usually what they do is they take the date like this. You are supposed to calculate like this 176 into 26 days because they work only for 26 days. That is what the wage should be calculated. The minimum wage approximately if you go with it uh, 4,500 and between uh, 4,600 you will actually get this figures because that is what the thing is for 4,576 or something like that you will actually get. Now understand why I'm telling you this is the market if they have more supply usually the minimum wage rate act says that you can't give them less than 176 rupees. You will definitely give more than 176. See, nobody will actually work for 5,000 per month, isn't it? A laborer. Now, what is the cost of living? The cost of living is something more. What will they feed their children? So, this is what the thing is. Next is we have productivity and cost of living. See, here only cost of living is actually proportional to the prevailing marketing rate also. Now, productivity in the sense, now we have three types of labors. One is skilled labor highly skilled labor and unskilled labor now here what happens is though we know that productivity matters highly skilled labor should actually get more than the skilled labor and underskilled labor so even this is one of the factor when they actually allot the wage and salary administration for each and every employee and the laborers the next one we have is trade union bargaining power so we already have studied in the hrm to that what exactly collective bargaining is now bargaining let me tell you what exactly it is now we have employer we have employee now in middle we have this trade union now usually what happens is trade union are the people who always play like a bridge or they play like a broker or a middleman who always support the employees and but there are some trade unions who actually indirectly support the employer now what happens is collective bargaining will happen so what the employee wants and what the employer wants both of them they come to one agreement and then the salary is actually fixed or the laborers wages is fixed that is what we call thus trade unions bargaining power next is job requirement now from 1 to 10, what is the job requirement the employer needs? If that need is met, now it depends on the employer that how much he will actually give the salaries. Management attitude. Now understand here, again, this is all the same thing what we actually studied about the previous point we had, isn't it? That is organization ability to pay. Now here the same thing, management attitude. It is this one and the same. But here what happens is there are few companies who have made big names. Now they don't want to pay less than the targeted price or they can't give more than the targeted price. So what exactly a targeted price is? Say example here we have the levels of management. Now here we have the top, middle and we have lower level or supervisor level. The management attitude is whoever comes and works in our organization who is in the middle level 
his salary should be 1.5 lakh. Now, this is what the management attitude is. Though it seems to be very high or it seems to be like the person who is in the middle level is actually getting more salary than a person in another company who is in the top level management. But what exactly it is? It is the attitude of the management. So I'll give you an example here while I'll teach you more about the management attitude. Next one is psychological and social factors. Psychological and social factors will definitely play a very important role in the factors which will definitely affect the salary and wages administration because some of the employees are there who only work for the money. That is, they feel that the money is a psychological factor for them. But there are many other people who feel that even respect, position, promotion, those are the factors which affects the wages and salary administration and the last one here is legislative consideration again you are supposed to follow the norms of the government what the government is actually giving it to you so these are the 10 factors which affect the salary and wages administration the first one is demand and supply so i'll give you examples here practical examples where you people can learn more about it the first one here is i'll give you the example of two companies, company A and B. Say here, they are the manufacturing company. Let's go with the manufacturing company. They go with chairs and tables. That is what they manufacture. Now here there are 200 laborers and here we have 100 laborers. Now the both of them, they are the competitors. Let's go with the wage rate here. Now there are three types of wage rate system that is piece wage rate system time wage rate system and the mixture of both so here what happens the wages are if they work they actually get 400 rupees per hour and in b also it's a somewhat same say it is 390 rupees per hour now this is the wage per hour is what they are getting so that means time rate system is what they are practicing and they are actually giving it say example company a received an order of manufacturing 10,000 units or say 16,000 units let's go with 16,000 units okay now company b they actually got 20 lakh 20 lakh units order of chairs and tables units here it is units now what happens is here there are 200 laborers here they have 100 laborers now there is a slight demand in the manufacturing of company b now what happens is they can't actually get more laborers so how to go with it they will actually start hiring people and giving more wages to them now that is what the demand and supply category that will definitely affect the wage and salary administration but here what it does 16,000 usually they used to get with 10,000 or 12,000 now they got 16,000 now what happens is slowly there are so many laborers who will actually feel like going and joining B because B needs it because it is 2 lakh units or 20 lakh units they are supposed to manufacture so B will start hiring more laborers when B is hiring more laborers what happens is there is a demand of laborer now the laborers feel that now it is our turn to actually quote the price so this is what happens in demand and supply say demand for and supply of labor and its availability will have great influence on the determination of wage rate that is what it is see here if there is shortage of labor now here what has happened there are only 100 laborers they have got 20 lakh units to manufacture now they have shortage now what has happened here is the wage demanded will be high In the same way here now there is no demand actually what usually used to happen the same thing now what it does whatever the 400 is it will be the same but here what happens is after the demand and supply probably it will actually go to 500 per hour it can even go to 600 and 700 it depends on the demand and supply the next one is organization's ability to pay 
let's go with the practical example now i told you about a and b now let's go with the practical example where i'll give you the real company slab rates say we have oracle has a company right now we have oracle say we have here wipro Wipro. Now, Oracle and Wipro, they go with services, but here what happens is the salary administration, which I'm telling you is, there are few employees who are in Oracle, they actually get more salary if you compare with the same designation. Say here, they, there is a person called sales manager. Here also sales manager. Now, if we go with the Wipro or Oracle, then you will understand that there were an experiment which was actually made. The questioners were asked with the employees of Wipro and Oracle and later they went with one of the conclusion where Oracle actually goes with the overall development. So here also the administration of salary and wages depends and these are the factors. And Oracle, they actually pay more than the people who actually work in Wipro. If you compare the same designation also, Oracle pays more than Wipro. Next one here is, this is the major affecting factor in determining wage and salary structure of an organization where financial position. See here, when you go with financial positions, so Wipro have really a very sound financial system because of Azim Premji, but still, what happens is because they have a lot of employees, now dilution of the salary will happen. Whereas in Oracle, what happens is they want qualitative employees. They want people who can actually work for the organization and how much is required only those much recruitment will happen in Oracle and the people whoever works, they will actually get more salary than compared to the other employees. So some of the reputed economically sound organizations are offering good compensation packages. But when it comes to compensation, let me tell you, Wipro is a company which goes with very high compensation to its employees. So that is a plus point of Wipro. If you go with Oracle here, compensation, there is a problem with Oracle, but not with Wipro. The next one is prevailing market rates. Now what exactly the market rates is? They go with those market rate and they go with the competitive rates. So these are the two things which they actually see. Say example here when I told you about uh, A is giving 400 rupees and B is giving 390 rupees. See this, these are the competitive rates which the HR manager should actually see to it and then he should actually or she should actually go with fixing the rate for the laborers. If the trade union is very strong, then what happens is the trade union will start dictating to the organization how much should be the wages or the salary. But here what happens is you need to see or you need to determine the wage and salary of the competitors and then fix the salary and the wages. This is the practically the major factor. See, this is what the practicality happens here. That includes any organization to take a base that is how much it should be. Should it be more than 350 or should be less than 450. So this is the targeted base. Now within this they actually play. This is what the HR manager is good in and he is a person who will manipulate the amount and then he'll go with it. He wants to give a good remuneration to the laborers but in the meantime he want to save money for his company this is the reason the hr manager will be a manipulator here next is prevailing market rate is also known as the most comparable rate the most comparable rate of wages that is what the prevailing market say example you will not take only two of the factories or two of the companies you go with the nearest and the dearest companies or the factories and you will check how much they are paying and then you will calculate an average you will take and then you feel that what is your demand what is your supply what is your requirement uh, are you paying them really good are they attracted to the salary or the wages will you get highly skilled people or not so th these are the factors which goes with the prevailing market rate productivity now productivity is measured in terms of output per man are that means here you need to understand that as i told you productivity depends on the person who is manufacturing the product or the person who is working in the organization now whether he is highly skilled or semi-skilled or unskilled 
it depends on what services he gives to the organization on that basis the organization will actually give him a proper wage and salary system that is how much he will get how much he will not get everything is transparent that is what the productivity says now it is a result of several factors now productivity is not just i manufacture something to the organization the organization is giving something to me there are so many factors such as technology labor efforts see i'm only talking about the labor efforts but you should also know that the technology is also there now that means the organization has given so many other things for the benefit of a good product to be manufactured method of doing work management consideration and support and there are so many other things so however productivity has always remain has a base for wage differences since it is a base which is apparently justifiable and acceptable now if i go with more productivity i get more salary if i go with less productivity i get less salary the same thing for the wages as well cost of living now the cost of living is actually a direct factor for salary and wage administration because here here what society feels and what is the standard of living what is the cost of living are we meeting the standards everything is calculated that is the reason here even cost of living is one of the factor which affects the wage and salary administration that means it is always expected that there has to be adjustments in pay rates that means how the society is moving now we are in 21st century if we go with the same 1936 and 1938 minimum act if you go with it can we survive definitely no it depends because technology is changing the world is changing we are now into digitalization now if we go with the old concept of 1938 1948 and then we start giving the wages to the employees and the laborers then there is a problem that is the reason you are supposed to always have a survey of what market is and how much we are supposed to give trade union bargaining now here trade union what happens i told you while explaining this now we have here employer employee and the trade union which acts like the bridge between employer and employee now when trade union is very strong in any of the organization what happens is they are the one who actually goes and they ask the employer this is what the rate it should be and they'll start fixing a one particular rate but in the same time if the trade union is sold in the other hand if the trade union is weak in that organization or in that particular factory or industry now it is the fixation done by the employer that is this is what i'm going to give it to the employees and the laborers so generally mechanism for fixing of wage for majority of workers is collective bargaining let me tell you what is this collective bargaining is where the trade union will meet and they'll discuss about the employer benefits and the employee benefit where they come to a mutual understanding that what are the things which the employees want from the employer and what are the things in return the employer wants from the employees that is called the collective bargaining where both the parties will have a win win situation next here is if we go with the collective bargaining or negotiation and collective bargaining and negotiation that depends upon the trade union strength the next one here if you understand if there is a strong union usually what happens is they start dictating that how much the rate system should be how much the salary should be and they are the one who will actually fix the rate and the salary of the employees next one is job requirements now from the organization perspective appropriate job analysis and job evaluation see there are two methods job evaluation and we have job analysis and they are the two factors which actually determines the salary how much we are supposed to pay to the middle level how much we are supposed to pay to the supervisory level it is quite obvious also that wages to be paid 
to the workers should be accordance with the duties. Now, what are the duties, responsibilities? What are the work or services he has accepted? Now, there are so many other laborers in the factory. What happens is they do part-time, they do full-time or they even do OT that is overtime. Now, what happens is the wages for all the three is not the same. There is always a difference here. Now, is he skilled? Is he not skilled? Is he untrained? All these things are the factors which actually determines the requirement of the job. The next one is management attitude. Now, there are a few reputed companies, as I told you about Wipro and Oracle, the same way here. There are few companies, say, if you go internationally or if you go nationally, that is the MNC companies or any of the companies which are now they have started. The attitude of the employer, that is the owner or the CEO of the company, even that is one of the factor where he feels that I should pay more salary to my employees because in return, I want the loyalty. Again, that is the attitude of the management. That is what he wants and how much he can pay. That is his strength. And sometimes what happens is there are so many companies which usually in initial to attract more employees to join their organization, they start giving more salaries in initial. But there are few companies after five years or six years, what happens when they start getting more profits, start getting more uh, targets, whichever they have accomplished. Now what happens is they are the one who actually gives more salary to the employees. Psychological and social factors. Here you need to understand that the person who will actually perceive wage and compensation package has a sole parameter for success or failure in his life. Now that means what? It depends on the psychological factor and the society. That is how much for how much the laborers will come. Even that is what it is. See, demand is not there if you feel, I'll let me tell you here, human resource is something where demand is always there because production is happening. The companies need to run. We need more people. Now what happens is today, if I start giving say, 40,000 rupees to an employee, 40,000 rupees to an employee, 40,000 right now it is a good salary for him and he'll work for me for at least a year or two years. The third year, if I give him the same salary, will he work in my organization? That is a big question. When you understand that question, you will get to know that is the factor. What type of factor? It is a psychological factor that after working for 24 months, still my employer is giving me only 40,000. There is no recognition is what he feels. So that is what psychological factor is. Now, social factor like now even he wants to come up in his life. Now, after he joined any of the companies or any of the institution where he feels that he's working and he's getting paid. Now, what happens is societal factor is also one of the factor. He started his work in 2016, if you go with it. 2019, he feels that he should get more reputation, respect in the society. Now what happens is that same 40,000, if he gets here also, now what happens is there is a decline in the salary system. So societal factors he cannot meet. Now he can't actually have a luxury house. He can't actually get more fashionable items or products or his lifestyle is the same thing or it can actually go less. So now these are the factors psychologically as well as societally will also be a part of the factors which will affect the administration of salary and wages. Legislative consideration. Now here legislative provisions do provide protections to the working community by fixing bottom line for wage payment. Now I told you about this 1936 wage act where Britishers they actually went with this 1936 act. India was not even independent in this particular year. But after that, when we got independence and soon after that, a year later in 1948, we went with the minimum wage act where we revised the wages and the salary to the employees. Now, many a times it was found that the bargaining power of the workers was not strong enough to ensure fair wages. There were so many trade unions wherein they were actually 
in contact with the employer and getting favorism by the employer and it was a problem for the employees and the laborers so that is a time where legislative actually came into picture and they were the people who started bargaining with the employers so that is why the legislative consideration is very very important see legislation like minimum wage act 1936 which provided the statutory minimum wages if i tell you about what was the wage in 1936 you people will be in a shock saying that were the people really working for only that much amount so i want you people to actually research more on 1936 minimum wage act and then come forward and please share your comments in the comment box and let me know that how many of you have actually gone through the 1936 minimum wage act which was revised in 1948 so these are the factors which affects the wages and the salary for the next session, I'll come up with some more topic of wages and administration. Till then, thank you so much. I'll see you when I see you.